Hey guys, welcome to Rise Student Ministries. I'm so glad you guys are here watching on YouTube tonight. My name is Pastor Brian. I'm so glad to be here. And um, I'm really excited for what God's put on my heart for tonight. Now before I get into it, I just want to share with you a few things quickly. Uh, first thing is, next Wednesday, you are going to want to be at Rise Youth at campus at 7 p.m. next Wednesday. Why? Because this is going to be the last Wednesday for Pastor Jay. Um, as you have already heard, Pastor Jay is stepping down as he seeks out and pursues what the next step that God has for him and his wife. And we are super excited. We are praying for him. We are um, just passionately excited about what God is doing in his life. But next Wednesday is going to be his very last Wednesday here at Rise Student Ministry. So come out. Let's say, um, let's just congratulate him. Let's party with him, celebrate with him. He has one last powerful message that he wants to share with you guys. So please um, bring your friends, bring your family, bring your dogs, bring whoever you want so that they, so you guys can hear um, what he has for you guys. And also so you can, um, you know, share those deepest, darkest emotions that you have, you know, you know, you can cry and tear up and all those good, awesome things that happen with that. So that is going to happen next Wednesday. So make sure you are there. Okay. So tonight, Pastor Jay gave me the opportunity to preach to you guys, to share something that's on my heart. And as, as I began to seek out what God has, I realized that right now there's so much things happening at the church. So many different things happening around the world, you know, with the election and everything that's going on. It just seems like everything is different. So many things being hit us, hit at us at once that it's kind of crazy and kind of insane. So as I began to seek out God and what um, I wanted to speak with you guys here tonight, God really began to lay in my heart a certain passage. Now you may have heard this passage before, but honestly, I believe that it is going to be encouraging to you. I think it's going to uplift you and really remind you that God is still there with you. So if you have your Bibles or if you want to you know, go to the next browser and just check it out, I'm going to be reading a passage from Joshua uh, chapter 1 verses 1 through 9. Okay, Joshua chapter 1 verses 1 through 9. And this is what it says. All right, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people, into the land I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the lands of the Hittites, to the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man should be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. So be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do, uh, to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now guys, let me give you some context here for the scripture because I really believe that this passage is going to encourage you. So this, let me tell you about the story behind this passage. See, the Israelites, 
God's chosen people just lost Moses, the leader. The guy who talked to God in the burning bush. The guy who told Pharaoh to let my people go. The guy God used to bring plagues upon Egypt and free the Israelites from slavery. The same guy who received the Ten Commandments from the Lord and led the people through the wilderness and all that that entails. The same Moses they relied on so much. This leader of theirs has passed. He's gone. And to make it crazier, the Israelites were no longer in the wilderness. No, they were on the edge of something new. The promised land. But it was a mystery. So much uncertainty awaited them. And with Moses gone, they now had a brand new leader, Joshua. So many things were hitting them left and right. They had a a, a new destiny that God was calling them to. They lost their leader. They were struggling with so many different things. So you can imagine that the people of God were afraid. They were terrified. They didn't know what was going to happen. So many things were hitting them from all over. And for Joshua, this newly appointed leader, had a big uh, shoes to fill. It must have been even crazier for him. With so many things happening at once, Joshua and the people of God must have felt so overwhelmed. So at the beginning of this book, You can imagine that there's a question that everyone was asking themselves as they faced this situation. And that question is a title of my message tonight. What now? What now? Guys, the truth is that tonight you might be asking that very same question. What now? Maybe tonight you are uncertain about the future. Maybe tonight you've been hit with a situation that has your head spinning. Maybe tonight you are stressed because you don't know what's going to happen. Whatever the change is, good, bad, ugly. Maybe tonight you, like the Israelites, like Joshua, find yourself in over your head. Well, the truth is, no worries. Because literally God has something that he wants to say to you. And from the passage that we just read, there are a few things that we can understand on when we ask ourselves this question so we can answer it. What's next? So the very first thing I want to share with you tonight, the very first thing that God wants to speak to you tonight, when you're facing all these different things, as you're facing and asking this question, what's next? The very first thing is this. Trust that God already knows and has planned about your situation. Trust that God already knows and has planned for it. You know, I can totally relate because there was a moment when my life just seemed so overwhelmed. I just went to college in Texas and I just been having the time of my life. I went for my very first semester and toward the end of the semester, it was time to try to pay for the next semester. But the truth is, is I had no money. I had no job. It was a miracle that I was even able to pay for that first semester. But now, what's next? I didn't have the money. And so if I didn't find $10,000, I was going to have to come back home. And as each day got closer, I was trying to trust God. I was trying to figure this whole thing out. But as each day got closer to that deadline for that price... I began to get more and more afraid. I began to really stress out. I mean, I was praying, but man, I was really over my head. And I remember asking God just a few, like a week before my deadline, God, what's next? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to stay at college or am I supposed to go back home? I feel like I'm a failure right now. I don't know what's going on. And so I asked God, God, if you want this, if you are the one that knows everything, Then God, speak to me. Show me that you know the plan. Show me what I need to do. And this is what's crazy because when you ask God, 
he's going to answer. And so I, I told him, God, this next Sunday at the church I was attending, I need you to speak directly to me. I need you to let me know what's going on so I can trust you. And so that Sunday, I'll never forget it because as I got to church, there was a brand new person who'd never been to the church before. Uh, she was a larger lady in a bright red southern dress and a bright red hat. I remember that big like Sunday best hat that you might see in the south. That's the kind of hat it was. And as uh, Sunday service began to go, uh, we began to worship God. And at the end of the worship of God, this lady stood up and began to speak in tongues. Literally, this never happened at this particular church. So I was excited. And then she gave the interpretation. And let me, know, let me just tell you guys, that just blew my mind. Because this is what the Lord said in that thing. And it really affected me because it was to me directly. He said, and I quote, I know what you're going through. I have planned for you to go to this college. And my plan has not been changed. You will go to this college. But it's not going to be in your timetable. I have ordained your steps. Trust me. And I will show you what you're going to do next. Man, that was powerful for me. And so I knew in confidence I was going to go back to Sagu, my college. I just didn't know that I'll be going back a year later. So I came back home. And at first I was a little defeated. But I trusted God that God knew what he was doing. And through that whole year, I continue to pray and seek God. And every single time God confirmed, I know what I'm doing. I know the plans I have for you. I know. So just trust me. And guess what? I went back to college. And I was able to complete my degree and all those wonderful things. But that's because God already knew what was going to happen. He already knew that I was going to be there. God already planned it out for me. So let's go back to the problem with the Israelites. All right, they were scared. But can you imagine just how scared their new leader Joshua was? That must have been something wild. So as he takes his leadership mantle, as he starts this new journey, God has a few words for him. And this is what, jo this is what God tells Joshua. He says to be strong and courageous. And then he follows it with this. For you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. You see, God was telling Joshua that he already had a plan in place. He knew that Moses was going to pass. He knew that Moses was not going to lead them into the promised land. He already planned and already had someone set up in place to do so. Joshua. He Nothing um, surprised God. Nothing came out of God's plans. Everything was set up. And he was telling Joshua, hey, I got this. I got everything. Listen, I, you are going to go through this and you are going to be successful because you're going to lead these people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers in the previous generation. The purpose was to give Joshua and his people a place to settle in preparation for his master plan, Jesus. And he knew how to get there. He knew that there were going to be trials that Joshua and the Israelites would have to face. He knew the path to victory and told Joshua that er everywhere Joshua steps would lead to that victory if he would only be strong and courageous. But ultimately, it came down to this. Would Joshua trust God? And here's the thing. Joshua had already seen God work in the lives of the Israelites. He's seen all the miracles. He literally saw bread fall from the sky when the Israelites had no food. Or when, when they were thirsty and had no water, where God told Moses to hit a stick with a rock and water literally flowed from it. He's seen all the miracles. He knew that God is faithful. So although Joshua didn't understand all the workings of what was going on, he knew he could count on God. Joshua knew that God has everything under control. He knows the ending at the beginning, and he knows how, how we get there. This is why Joshua is able to trust God. This is why when, Josh, when God tells Joshua, hey, I have a plan in place, trust me, Joshua is able to trust. Guys, we got to be more like Joshua. Whenever change hits us, 
Whenever storms or situations or whatever comes at us, we must trust that God wasn't caught off guard by it. That He is prepared for this and He will lead us through it. No problem has ever stopped God before and no problem will ever stop God now. And often, the problems that we think are life ending and end of the world scenarios are just mere bumps that don't really matter compared to the power and might of the living God. The truth is, is when we face uncertainty, when we face struggles, God's plan isn't changed. He's still in control and he knows what's going on. So he says, trust him. We need to trust him because no situation will ever cancel God's plan for your life. And then there's another thing that God tells Joshua, and it's this, okay? In the midst of change, God's word is our lifesaver. I'm going to say that again because it's so powerful. In the midst of change, God's word is our lifesaver. So here's a secret that you need to understand. The reason why Joshua was able to trust God so easily for the future, despite how the world looked at the time, was because of one thing. He focused on the word of God, okay? In verse 7, this is what God tells Joshua, okay? Only be strong and very courageous, being careful, listen, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. That's the word of God. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law, a.k.a. the Bible, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. This is what God is telling Joshua. So now notice what God tells him. First, God says to follow the law. That is the Bible, the scripture. Also know that, that when God says to do what to do, God is telling Joshua is an action. What God tells Joshua to do is an action. It's a verb. God says to actively follow the scripture. Because if he does, then Joshua will have success wherever he goes. Whatever situation he finds himself in, he will get through it. God tells Joshua this twice just to make sure Joshua heard it the first time. So this is critical it's important because God knew that everything was going to change for Joshua for the Israelites and everything around them and although they trusted God God knew that they would need something to hold on to through the roughest parts of these trials and of these situations which is why God gave Joshua this commandment or this command you see guys the Bible is our guide in how to live our best life here on earth In it is the key to what will help us and warns us of what will hurt us. The Bible gives us hope and peace through Christ in no matter what situation we face. It is life to us. It is the map that will always lead to the treasure. We are able to survive when we hold on to the truth. This is why it's so critical to study the Word of God. To never ignore it. Because it is life-giving. It is hope-giving. It helps us through everything. It is literally the answer to every problem you're ever going to have. And the truth is that when life hits hard, and man, it's going to hit hard sometimes. It might be hitting hard right now. When change comes at us, we need something to hold on to. You know what? Think of it this way. When a boat is out at sea, okay, when you go sailing... It ha- a boat has something that is critical. It has something called an anchor. Okay? And what does an anchor do? An anchor does this, okay? When you attach an anchor to the boat and then throw it overboard, it keeps the boat from floating away or being thrown around by all the waves. It brings stability even in the fiercest storms. Without an anchor, the boat would be swallowed up by the sea and lost forever. So then the Bible, the word of God, is your anchor. Let me say that again. The Bible, the word of God, is your anchor in the midst of the storm. 
when change, when problems and everything else comes at you, if you have your anchor, you will be able to hold on and survive and thrive. You will be able to get back up. Why? Because it is a way that God speaks to us. It is the guidance that we need. It is the way that we won't get tossed around and thrown up because we know what God's plan says and we can trust it. That is why the word of God is our lifesaver. That's what God tells Joshua. And the truth be told, that's what God's telling us here now. But all this accumulates. All this comes down to one big idea. And I want you guys to get this tonight because this is what it is. When we are facing these kind of things, when, we, when the Israelites were facing this new direction that God was planning, when God was telling them, hey, this is what's going to happen, when he was telling this to Joshua, there was something that you guys need to hear. And this is what, this is what we need to hear right now. It's this. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. This phrase is repeated over and over and over again here. Throughout this whole conversation that God is having with Joshua, the Lord keeps repeating this set of words. Be strong and courageous. So obviously, this is important. But what does this mean? Well, you can break it down into two parts. First, let's look at courageous. In the English dictionary, the word courageous means to not be deterred by danger or pain. But when you look at it, what the word is in the original Hebrew, the way that God intended it, it paints a clearer picture. You see, the word, this word courageous in the Hebrew comes from the word ahmet, ahmet, which literally means to be alert and bold, to be willing to hold your ground, almost like a, a guard ready to fight if the time comes. And the truth is, is that this goes with the other word that God speaks, which is the Hebrew word um, kazak, kazak, which means to be firm to not break or be pushed back. So now when you put these two words together, to be strong and courageous in the original context, the original word, you get the picture of what God is saying to Joshua and the people of Israel. And it's this, stand your ground. Don't break. Don't give up when you face trouble. Be willing to stand in the midst of adversity and not give in. Now, there's a reason why God is telling Joshua this. He repeats it almost as often as be strong and courageous. And when we look at the scripture, we see it. God said, tells Joshua to be strong and courageous because, keyword, because God is with him. God tells Joshua to be strong and courageous because God is with him. God won't leave him or forsake him. God has his back, which means that no matter what the situation Joshua finds himself in, God will be right by his side, giving Joshua strength and power and guidance. Wow. No wonder why God says Joshua will succeed. Because when God is for you, who can be against you? So I say all of this now, because let's focus on you guys. Let's focus on you. As God was saying these things to Joshua, the same application, the same wording applies to you as well. God is telling you the same thing. You need to be strong and courageous in the midst of change. You need to be strong and courageous when the fiercest storms hit you and you feel overwhelmed. Why? Because God, the Lord of hosts, the great I am, is with you. He won't leave you. He won't bail on you. He will be there for you through thick and thin. He will go with you wherever you might go. And as you trust God and follow his word, you will find success in whatever situation and whatever problem you might find yourself in. 
no matter how crazy the change that comes your way, you will make it through because God is there with you. He is fighting your battles for you. He knows the plan and he's sticking to it. We just have to trust in him and be strong and courageous to stand our ground, to um, not break. So don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. The same God who is with Moses and Joshua, the same God who is with the disciples, the same God who is and was and forever shall be, is the same God who is with you right now. Praise God. You see, the truth is, right now, change is scary. When we face so many things and we don't know what's going to happen, man, we can get stressed out. But this scripture from the Word of God is encouragement that I felt the Lord told me to tell you. In the midst of problems, God's saying, be strong and courageous for I am with you. Don't give up because I know the plan. Trust in the Lord and you will succeed. So tonight I challenge you, be strong and courageous. Trust in his plan that God knows what he's doing. Listen to the word of God. Meditate. Focus on it day and night so you know the plan and so you can be encouraged and filled up and be strong because God's going to be with you. And wherever you plant your foot, you will be victorious. Whatever situation you find yourself in, you will get through it. Because our God is our anchor. The Word of God is our stronghold. We will be able to face it as we trust in God. So guys, thank you so much for letting me speak this truth in your life. I'm super excited for where God is leading us. Because honestly, this is a step to a new frontier. And I really believe that in the next coming months, in the next coming year, God is going to be opening up new doors for us to step through. To see his work and his word come to life. And as we walk this journey together, let's be strong and courageous. Trusting God, following what he's leading us to so we can change this community and change this world together. So let me pray for you guys. And remember, come next week so we can celebrate Pastor Jay. So we can hang out with him one last time before he moves on with where God is leading him. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for these amazing, powerful world changers. Lord, I pray that even now, whatever situation they may find themselves in, that they would stand strong and courageous because you are with them. Let them be encouraged, Holy Spirit. Let them um, not be afraid, but let them trust in you no matter what goes on because, God, you are with them right here, right now. I can't say that enough. Father, show them who you are. Show your plan in their life, O God, and may they listen to it. May they not cower in fear, but stand in strength and courage. Empower them, O God, to speak your word and life to their friends and family, to live the life that you call them to be, O God. And Father, as we face this next part of life, let's face it with you, trusting in you, listening to you and obeying you, God, because you are there. Thank you, Lord, for everything. And where we're facing, be with us as we trust in you. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Guys, I love you, and I'm praising God for what God's about to do. But hey, I'll see you all next week. Love you. Bye, guys.